Hey, this is Angela Galloway, and we are continuing in Chapter 9, Section 1. Uh, so this is the end of 9-1, and we covered last time how to create our uh, confidence intervals for proportions. So we looked at creating a, a 90% or 95% or whatever level uh, of confidence we wanted an interval for the population proportion. And so we looked at this formula here. We talked about um, how to figure out our Z alpha halves, which is what we'll plug in to create the confidence interval. That's going to come from your level of confidence. These are the most common ones that we talked about, but you could see on a problem something like an 80% confidence interval or something like that. And if you did, uh, you would just need to figure out, you know, what is my uh, Z alpha half. So the way we got these was looking at our normal table. You could do that. You could also do the inverse norm for this area over here. If you do the inverse norm of 0.025, you should get this negative 1.96 or something something close to that. Um, and so you could do that for uh, any of your confidence levels that you're trying to find that Z alpha half. But these are going to be the most common ones that you'll see. So what we got to last time um, was uh, one, just looking at how to do this in the calculator. That's probably how most of you uh, will be creating these confidence intervals. Of course, you don't have to. You can use the formula, um, but some of you might like to do it in the calculator. So to do it in the calculator, uh, we go to stat, test, and one proportion Z interval. So look at this here. Uh, so we're going to go to stat and then over to tests. Um, then you're going to go down. Uh, all the way down here to one proportion Z interval. And we're using that because we have just one proportion that we're talking about in this, in these examples, we only have one P hat, right? Uh, so that's the one proportion part. The Z interval comes from the fact that we're using a Z alpha half, right? So this is a, a normal uh, distribution that we're looking at. So that's where the Z interval is coming from. So you push enter there. Uh, you're going to put in your X, which is your number of successes uh, or the number of people that were in the category that you were interested in. So for our example, it's 331. N is our total sample size. Um, our confidence level is the C level. Um, if you want a 90% confidence interval, you'd put in 0.90. For 95, you put 0.95. So just make sure you convert that percentage into a decimal. And then you calculate and you get the lower bound and the upper bound for your interval. This is your P hat. So it goes ahead and calculates the P hat for you in case you need that or if you want to double check if it matches what you had already calculated. Uh, and there's your N, which just shows your sample size again. So this would be our 95% confidence interval. Here on this screen, I did the 90% confidence interval. Um, so that's how you would do that. All right, so moving on. Uh, one other thing we can do with this margin of error formula. So this is our margin of error. Usually it's either uh, denoted with the E uh, or with um, margin of error. Sometimes it'll be MOE instead, but um, you know, typically in our formulas, if we just want to use one letter, we'll use the E to denote it. Okay. And so error is equal to that Z alpha half, which we get from our level of confidence times this, which is our standard deviation of the sampling distribution that we're looking at. So it's the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. Okay. Um, now, if we wanted to find out what's the sample size that we need, so like before we do um, our survey, we want to know, uh, you know, how big of a sample do I need to take? We can rewrite this formula and solve for n. And so that's what we did here. This is our formula rewritten for the variable n. So when I do that, it says I can figure out what sample size I need by doing p hat times 1 minus p hat times the z alpha half over the error squared. Okay, now remember this is before we go and take our sample. Okay, so I could figure out like what level of error I want, like maybe I want a margin of error of plus or minus 2% or I want it to be plus or minus 3% or whatever. I could figure that out. I can also get this because that will be based on my level of confidence, right? So I can figure out that I want to be 95% confident or 90% confident or whatever, right? So I can get those two things. 
but if I'm talking about before I go out and survey, I'm not going to know p hat, right? Because that's what I get from my sample survey. So there's two ways we can deal with that, okay? The first way is, since we're not going to go know p hat, we could look at this, the p hat times 1 minus p hat, and think of what's the largest value that this could ever be. And the largest that it could ever be is 0.25. That happens when this is 0.5. When you plug that in, uh, you get 0.25. So if you plug in any other value into there, the largest it's ever going to be is 0.25 when you multiply it out, okay? So we're going to plug in 0.25 there. And the reason why we do that is because that's going to give us definitely a large enough sample size. It's probably going to give us a sample size a little bigger than what we need, but at least we know it's more than sufficient to get the level of confidence we want and the margin of error, okay? So that is one way we can do it. And that's if we have no idea what p hat might be. Okay, we just plug in the 0.25 and then, you know, plug this in from our formula or from our problem. Our problem will give us uh, what we need to get this and this. The second way we can do these types of problems is if we have a good guess of what p hat might be, like maybe um, we've done this survey every year and we're about to do it again, we could probably guess what the p hat's going to be. Or maybe someone else has done a survey similar to this one and we have a good guess of what p hat's going to be. If we have a good guess for p hat, then we can use that guess for p hat and calculate the problem that way. Okay, so let's look at how we would do this. So this example says we want to find what sample size we would need to have an error of plus or minus 3%. Okay, so that's going to be our E. That's our error at 95% confidence. So 95% confidence, that tells us what our Z alpha half is going to be. This is a little harder to write like this. So that's our z alpha half there, uh, or it's going to tell us how to find our z alpha half, okay? Uh, for the proportion of all elementary students that ride the bus to school at least a once a week, okay? So that's the study we're wanting to do. So how do we know what sample size we need? Well, this is our formula, okay? So let's say we have no educated guess for p hat. So we have no idea. Maybe it's the first time we've ever done this study. We have no idea if we're going to get 10% of students or 90% or 5% or 35%. We don't know, okay? So if we have no idea, then we're going to say the largest possible value of this is 0.25, okay? Then our Z alpha half comes from the 95%. 95%, the Z alpha half for that is 1.96. E, our margin of error, is going to be 3%. The only thing we need to make sure we do there is convert that percentage into a decimal. Pretty much any time you're working with a formula, a math formula, if you have a percentage, you're going to convert it to a decimal. Okay, that's how it is with all like interest type problems. Any of our problems where we're using percentage, we convert it into a decimal. Okay, so we convert that 3% to 0.03. And then the formula says to square that, okay? So when we do that, we get 1,067.1, and you always round up, okay? So always round up to the next whole number, which here would be 1,068, okay? Now the next way we could do it is, let's say, you know, someone else... Uh, in a county near us had done a similar study and they had gotten a p hat of 0.2 so they had found that about 20 percent of students ride the school bus at least once a week okay so we're going to say that you know we think our p hat's probably going to be pretty close to that so we're going to guess that that's going to be pretty close to what our p hat's going to be okay and remember you know it doesn't it's not going to affect any of our outcomes if we are a little off here. Like if we end up getting a study and our p hat is 25%, um, you know, this isn't going to really make a big difference. All this is helping us to figure out is what is the sample size we need, okay? And so it gives us a good approximation of how many people do I need to sample. So I know from the beginning, do I need to be asking like 500 people or do I need like 5,000? You know, like just a general idea of how many I need to choose. So I know from this, the most people I will need is 1,068 to get that 3% and 95% confidence.
Um, but this will tell me that if my p hat really is around 0.2, I plug in the 0.2, this is all the same, I get 682.95, which again, I round up to 683. Okay, so now I see that if it is around 0.2, I really only need 683 people. So what I could do from there is I could say, well, you know, this gives me some good boundaries of how many people I need to choose for my sample. This is the most I could need. This is closer to what I'll need if the true p hat that or the p hat that I get in my sample is about 0.2. So maybe I'll sample like 800 or something. You know, that's somewhere in between the two. Or maybe I'll just go with the biggest number so that I can be sure that I'll at least get a margin of error of 3% and then my confidence is going to stay at 95%. Okay, so this can give us a good idea of how many people we need in our sample. Okay, let's do some more examples for margin of error just in general. Uh, this is a recent Gallup poll we're looking at um, U.S. adults who are afraid to walk outside alone at night. We have 36% said they were afraid. Uh, we have 7,141 adults in this study, which is a fairly large sample, so we should be expecting a, a small margin of error for that. So what was the margin of error at 95% confidence? Our margin of error is always going to be a plus or minus number because remember we're adding and subtracting that value to our point estimate. So we do the plus or minus z alpha half times the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. So uh, for our 95% uh, confidence interval here, uh, we do 1.96 for our z alpha half. Uh, then our p hat was 0.36. We plug in there. Our n was 7,141. So we put that in the calculator, and we should get 0.0111. Then if we wanted to convert that to a percentage, we could multiply by 100% and we get plus or minus 1.11%. Okay, so our margin of error there would just be plus or minus about 1%, right? So not a very big margin of error. Uh, what would the 95% confidence interval be? Well, we have our point estimate from here, right? And we just calculated our margin of error. So we're going to take our point estimate and add and subtract our margin of error, and we get that our 95% confidence interval is from 0.3489 up to 0.3711. Okay, so if you've already calculated your margin of error, to create your confidence interval, you just add and subtract that error onto your point estimate, okay? And then this one, again, is just another example of how to do uh, the confidence intervals. Here we had to actually calculate our p hat value. Uh, so p hat equals to 150 over 500, and we get 0.3. Uh, then for our confidence interval, if we were doing it by hand, we do the 0.3 plus or minus 1.96 comes from the 95% confidence that we want. We do 0.3 times 1 minus 0.3 divided by 500 and the square root of that. Um, the other way you can do this is you can do the one proportion z interval on your calculator. You use x equal to 150, n equal to 500. You do 95% confidence, and this is going to be the interval you get, 0.25983 to 0 0.34017. All right, so that's the end of section 9.1. Our next video uh, will go into 9.2. Remember, if you have any questions, you can always email me at angela.galloway at kctcs.edu. Thanks.